and laurel the graves of our dead. Under the sun and the dew, awaiting the judgment day. Love and tears for the blue, tears and love for the gray. Cheer and the boys will shout, the ladies say, we'll all turn out and we'll all feel gay when the building comes marching home. The old church bell will feel for joy, hurrah, hurrah, to welcome home our darling boy, hurrah, hurrah, the village lads and lies to say with roses. Party differences forgotten, forgotten in public grief. John Wilkes Booth believed to be the assassin. The president continues insensible and is thinking. Secretary Seward remains without change. Frederick Seward received two fractures on the skull and a cut upon the head as well. He is alive but hopeless. Major Seward's wounds are not dangerous. It is now ascertained with reasonable certainty that two assassins were involved in this horrible crime, Wilkes Booth being the one that shot the president, and the other whose name is not known, but whose description is so clear he can hardly escape. It appears from a letter found in Booth's trunk that the murder was planned before the 4th of March, but fell through then because the accomplice backed out until Richmond could be heard from. Booth and his accomplice were at the livery stable at 6 o'clock last evening, and there left with their horses about 10 o'clock, or shortly before that hour. It appears that they have been seeking it for days, they have been seeking their chance, but for some unknown reason, it was not carried into effect until last night. It appears that one has made his way to Baltimore, the other has not yet been traced. Abraham Lincoln died this morning at 22 minutes after 7 o'clock.
Faggots, a high-flying faggot forever.